Artillery is the god of war. That statement was made over half a century ago and still remains relevant to this day. In today's video, we'll be talking about the self-propelled artillery pieces that the foreign allies of the armed forces of Ukraine have shared with them and evaluate their impact on the effectiveness of the fight against the Russian occupiers. One of the first countries to come to the aid of the Ukrainians in these dark times was their closest neighbor, Poland. Assessing the seriousness of this tragic event and realizing the need for the lightning-fast suppression of this aggressor country, the Polish authorities and their people transferred more than $1.7 billion worth of weapons to Ukraine as soon as they could. In addition to 200 T-72 tanks, man pads, Soviet 2S-1, and other types of weapons, the military aid package included the AHS Crab self-propelled tracked howitzers. These 155mm giants are sort of combined essence. With the South Korean K9 Thunder chassis, the British AS-90M Braveheart turret with a 52 caliber barrel, and the Topaz Artillery Fire Control System from WB Electronics. At the same time, the first eight Crab self-propelled howitzers used the locally produced Obram UPG-NG chassis from Bumar, equipped with the S-12U engine and other elements such as road wheels from the Polish PT-91 Twardy MBT. But due to various design features, cracks, and the discontinuation of the S-12U engines, the UPG-NG was abandoned rather quickly. The Crab has a fire rate of 6 rounds per minute and an effective range of approximately 19 miles, which can be further extended to a maximum of 25 miles. At the end of May, Warsaw allocated 18 such guns to Ukraine, subsequently signing a contract for the supplier of another 60 Crabs worth $700 million, making Ukraine the first export buyer of Polish self-propelled guns. This agreement was Poland's largest defense contract in the last few decades. The Czech Republic decided it would not stand idle, also moving to actively transfer the necessary weapons over to Ukraine, among which there was a place not only for anti-tank weapons, combat helicopters, and armored personnel carriers, but also for the VZ-77 Dana self-propelled guns. This self-propelled artillery piece was created back in 1977 in Czechoslovakia and adopted by the local army. The name was not chosen by chance either, since in Czech, Dana is an abbreviation meaning vehicular gun with automatic loading. The system was created as an equivalent to the Soviet 2C3 Akatsya, but not without its own unique features. One of them being that it was the first wheeled 152mm SPG to enter service, and then there's its innovative loading system. The advantage of wheeled vehicles was not only the lower cost and greater mobility on the battlefield, but also ease of construction and maintenance. The tire pressure can be adjusted for excellent off-road capability, and the front four wheels were equipped with power steering. When firing, the self-propelled gun lowers three hydraulic stabilizers into the ground, and a crane mounted on the roof makes the process of loading ammunition easier. The Dana armored turret is mounted on a swivel mount adapted to a Tatra 815 8x8 wheeled chassis, divided into two halves by a howitzer recoil mechanism and a reciprocating firing trajectory. The left half of the turret is occupied by the gunner and the first loader. It contains fire control optics, electromechanical guidance controls, an automatic propellant feeder, and an auxiliary ammunition magazine. In the right half, there is a mechanized projectile delivery system controlled by the second loader. Dana's primary force is the 152mm howitzer with a monolithic barrel and a fixed rifling pitch equipped with a single expansion chamber. It has a semi-automatic, wedge-shaped, vertically sliding gate, and the recoil assembly consists of a hydraulic buffer, two pneumatic return cylinders, and a control plunge mechanism that regulates the displacement of the buffering system. The gun's aiming occurs either through an electro-hydraulic drive system or emergency manual control. The three types of ammunition used as projectiles are 152 EOF, high explosive fragmentation rounds with a range of 11 miles, 152 EOFD, high explosive long range fragmentation rounds with a maximum effective range of up to 12 miles. 152 EPRSV, high explosive anti-tank rounds used for direct fire on armored targets. In the absence of a gyroscopic or similar system for independent automated and autonomous aiming of the gun, the ACS gunner can use the ZZ-73 panoramic telescope with a PG-1MD collimator for indirect aiming of the gun. If direct fire is needed, then the gun uses the OP-5-38D optical sight. 
Around 2020-2021, Ukraine had already tried to acquire 26 Dana M2 howitzers. However, due to the inflated price, it was decided to freeze the contract. And now here we are, talking about the gratuitous provision of these weapons by the Czech Republic. Ukraine was given both the basic versions of the VZ-77 Dana and the modified Dana M2, which were improved by the Excalibur Army back in 2017. These received a more durable cockpit, numerous improvements to the controls, navigation, aiming and fire control systems, as well as an updated module for diagnostics, communications, and backup systems. The eastern flank of NATO has stood firm in defense of Ukraine's sovereignty against the backdrop of Russia's brazen attack. Slovakia, along with the Czech Republic and Poland, decided to support their neighbors by handing over domestic Zuzana two self-propelled howitzers to them. This self-propelled gun is one modification of the previously mentioned Dana. The design of the Zuzana II allows the use of any 155mm NATO standard ammunition, and the Howitzer's Fire Control System allows operation in MRSI, Multiple Round Simultaneous Impact Mode. Another unique feature of the Zuzana II is that the gun is mounted externally between two completely separated turret compartments. Because of this, the ACS crew is reliably protected from any potential danger associated with the mechanics of the gun and automatic loader, as well as gases generated during firing. Unlike its predecessors, the Zuzana II received a new 52 caliber gun with an effective range of 25 miles, a rate of fire of up to 6 rounds per minute, and a 360 degree turret. Additionally, the platform was equipped with a new armored cab, thus improving automation. As a result, the required ACS crew was reduced to a mere three people. In April of 2022, Ukraine began negotiations on the purchase of 16 Zuzana IIs. Just a month later, Slovakia officially announced the transfer of eight such self-propelled guns to Ukraine, which are now already clearing out Ukrainian land from the Russian invaders. The next self-propelled gun from our list was transferred to Ukraine not only by the United States, which is the birthplace of this self-propelled gun, but also by Norway and Belgium. Although in the case of the latter, we're talking more about the UK, which bought 20 of these howitzers from a Belgian private defense company, fixed them up a bit, then transferred them into the capable hands of the Ukrainian armed forces. We're speaking of none other than the legendary M109. The history of this self-propelled gun began a little earlier than that of previous applicants. It was created back in the 1960s to replace the less successful M44 predecessor. This self-propelled gun from BAE Systems Land and Armaments very quickly gained popularity among US troops, winning the title of the standard self-propelled gun, having displaced even the M108, which was created in parallel with it. The hull and turret of the M109 are made from rolled aluminum armor, providing protection against fire, small arms, and field artillery shell fragments. Depending on the modification, the armament of the M109 can consist of M126, M185, or M284 155mm guns. It is further complicated by an M2 12.7mm machine gun, a 40mm MK19 Mod 3 automatic grenade launcher, and either a 7.62mm M60, M240, or an L4 machine gun. Additionally, in 2016, the U.S. Army tested out the ultra-high-speed projectiles with this self-propelled gun, originally developed for use by U.S. Navy electromagnetic railguns. As a result, it was found that they greatly increased the effective range of the howitzer. Also, the Army decided to consider using the M109 Paladin to fire HVPs as an anti-ballistic missile defense, since traditional anti-missile interceptors are much more expensive. Just to clarify, the usual firing range is about 13 miles, and the maximum with Excalibur ammunition is about 25 miles. But when using HVP, it increases considerably, for self-propelled guns at least, going out to 58 miles. Ukraine received about 20 basic M109 self-propelled guns and 22 Norwegian M109A3GN. The latter was developed back in the early 1990s, and the main difference between the M109A3GN modification and its previous versions is the new Rheinmetall barrels, which increased the overall firing range. Western European countries, as well as Eastern Europeans, supported Ukraine in the first days of the war. And although the supply of heavy weapons is still far from ideal in terms of volume, there's definitely been a start to it all. France was one of the first countries to transfer its highly efficient Caesar self-propelled guns to the armed forces of Ukraine. 
and just like the Czechoslovakian Dana, the abbreviation also found its place. In French, César stands for a truck equipped with an artillery system. This 155mm self-propelled gun was developed by the French company Nexter, formerly known as Giat Industries. The ancestor of Caesar was the TRF-1 towed gun and GCT AUF-1 self-propelled howitzer developed in the early 1980s. But decades later, the relevance of towed guns has only decreased, so all the production efforts were put into the development of autonomous howitzers. The basis of the howitzer is the Renault Sherpa 5 chassis with a 6x6 wheel formula and the export versions are integrated with either the Unimog U2 450L 6x6 or Tatra 815 8x8 chassis. The Caesar's force is concentrated into a 155mm cannon which accommodates 18 rounds at a rate of fire of 6 rounds per minute. It has a standard effective range of about 26 miles with ERFB extended range full bore projectiles, which can be further extended to 31 miles using rocket projectiles. Due to the howitzer's compact nature, it can be quickly transferred to mission areas by Lockheed C-130 Hercules and Airbus A-400M Atlas aircraft. A computerized system with automatic control based on the Sigma-30 inertial navigation system is responsible for the accuracy of the howitzer. In February of 2022, Nexter received a contract to develop a new generation Caesar 6x6 Mark II artillery system, equipped with a more powerful 460 horsepower engine, a new automatic transmission, updated software, and a level 2 armored cap, which increased the weight of the car to 25 tons. Shortly after the Russian invasion, France handed over 12 Caesars to the armed forces of Ukraine, and in June it announced the dispatching of six more such guns. With the help of an advanced navigation system and the ability to shoot according to the maneuver-shoot-maneuver maneuver principle, Ukrainian soldiers have more than once covered their would-be conquerors with volleys from these French self-propelled guns, all without staying in one position and deploying set howitzers in no more than five minutes' time. As one of the most influential countries in Western Europe, Germany could not simply stand by either. Despite the noticeable reluctance of its authorities to supply heavy weapons in the first months of the war, today the armed forces of Ukraine are already testing the Panzerhaubitz 2000 they've received, also known as the PZH 2000. This self-propelled howitzer was created for the Bundeswehr by two companies simultaneously, Kraus Mefe Wegmann and Rheinmetall. Together, they managed to present to the world one of the most powerful artillery systems in existence. This SPG's chassis and turret are based on components from the Leopard 2, allowing it to achieve superior cross-country ability with solid tracks and impressive protection against oncoming fire. The PZH-2000 compares favorably with its iron counterparts in its high rate of fire, firing 3 shots in 9 seconds and 10 shots in 56 seconds. At the same time, depending on the barrel's rate of overheating, these self-propelled guns are capable of continuously firing from 10 to 13 rounds per minute. Like the Slovak Zuzana 2, the PZH-2000 works well with the MRSI mode, and the reloading process is perfectly automated. Two operators can load 60 projectiles and propellants into it in less than 12 minutes. Rheinmetall also developed a JBMOU-compatible 155mm rifled gun with full-length chrome cladding and a muzzle brake on the end. The howitzer can use a new modular system with six charges that can be combined to provide a more optimized total charge power. The maximum range of the PZH-2000 with the standard DM-121 boat tail round is up to 19 to 22 miles. With base bleed rounds, it's about 25 to 29 miles and about 42 miles with M205 BLAP rounds. Additionally, the gun is capable of firing smart 155 high-precision artillery ammunition, which consists of two cluster sub-munitions that have a cumulative part to them. In April 2022, the Weld publication announced the possible sale of 100 PZH-2000s to Ukraine, along with a training kit and spare parts for a total of $1.73 billion. However, these deliveries can take place no earlier than 30 months after the signing of the contract and the weapons are needed now. For this reason, Germany made an agreement with the Netherlands to transfer five Dutch self-propelled guns with German ammunition to Ukraine and also trained Ukrainian soldiers in advance to work with the system. A little later, German authorities announced that they would send seven self-propelled guns from the Bundeswehr stocks after making the necessary repairs. As a result, by the end of June, the Ukrainian Minister of Defense, Oleksiy Reznikov, announced that the first PZH-2000s had begun to scorch the Russian invaders. What do you think? What guns could accompany these howitzers on the battlefield? Share your thoughts in the comments below. 
And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification button so you never miss another video just like today's. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.